you know, the people that that we would come across when we come into a village or a town, they were scared to death of us and they would fight us to the end. And you know, after we were there a few hours, we were buddies. We'd give them some candy and stuff like that. And we didn't rape and pillage and all that stuff. We were, we were just kids taken away from home. Uh, we, we had never been away from home. And then we ended up doing this. But it's a good thing we were as young and healthy as we were, or we wouldn't have made it. I was born in 1924 in eastern Colorado, out on the plains. My parents homesteaded out there and raised uh, cattle and horses. And we had no electricity, no running water. So we, we did it the hard way, but we didn't think too much about it because our neighbors did it the hard way, too. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I was 18 when Pearl Harbor was attacked. I was really irritated at the Japanese for uh, going in and raising hell and was furious, I guess, in, inside that, that that happened. Most of the young men like I was in, in school we wanted to kick ass those Japs for doing that, you know. I went to my principal and told him my story that I would like to go into service. He says, well, you have enough credits and everything. I, you can graduate right here in my office. I had an aptitude for uh, electronics and stuff like that. So they sent me to radio school. Went to Camp McCain, Mississippi. And they w this uh, was built in the middle of a cotton field. They fed us good and they trained the heck out of us. Classes on map reading. Rifle practice inside and out. More map reading. 1943, I was sent to Europe. I went to uh, to England in a in a, a French boat. We drove across England, of course, in the dark with our little headlights and taillights that are very, very dim. And then we got on board with our Jeep, then across the channel to France. And in France is where we went into battle. We entered from in Le Havre. We missed the first invasion, thank God. 
and we entered and went to Reims. It was exciting, of course. Here we are in a strange situation, but we had people waving at us uh, on the side of the road. They were anxious for us to come, send the Germans out of France. We had two Jeeps. I was actually put in charge of the two Jeeps. We had to check roads for uh, ability to carry tanks and that. We would be sent on different missions. In, in battle especially, they would map out the area that they want searched. Now we had to be frequently behind enemy lines or you might say ahead of our lines. There was hell and destruction everywhere we went. But we were here in this southern area and we were sent back up to the Battle of the Bulge. The Germans broke back out there into a, 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 they called it a bulge, and that's where it was so cold. It, it was colder than it had been in a long, long time. In order to, to sleep at night, we slept on the snow. You couldn't get to the ground and, and no fire, no heat, no nothing. I would light up a, a candle in the tent. To, you could actually feel the heat from, the, from that candle to warm your fingers so you could, you could write. And that's what we did was write a short letter to, to our family and friends. We had pushed the Germans to that position and then they had the, the Battle of the Bulge. They ran back over that area again and then we turned around and ran back over it again, pushing the Germans back. And so that was a hell of a mess, you know. We went through the Battle of the Bulge, and the Battle of the Rhine, and the, the Danube, and continued on through Germany, actually continued on through the, to the end of the war. There was two jeeps, and and uh, one jeep was sent out on a mission, and it he didn't come home that night, and so my jeep, which I was driving, we decided to go around this road this way, and see if we could see where, where they had trouble or why they didn't come back. So I'm driving, driving along. Two Germans jump out from behind a tree with a bazooka, and he fired that sucker at our Jeep. And I just hit the gas and dodged, and the explosive went off behind us and these two guys uh, they threw that bazooka down and ran back into the woods and I went on down the road down the road a little ways is is where we came around a little bend and and there was the village and a jeep came down the road facing us, 
and it was our Jeep. Holy God, and what was jumping out of that Jeep was long overcoats that Germans wore. And it was hell, it was German soldiers jumping out of that, our Jeep. The Germans were running down the road towards us, yelling hands up. And they were firing bullets at us. And and uh, I, I told the, the officer was riding by me and I told him to jump out, we're leaving. And and I rolled out and, and uh, these Germans were going up and down the road shooting with machine guns in there trying to, trying to wound me, I guess. And I'm in there running and crying and and I think and, and asking God to help me that I was in deep trouble. Nothing, nothing hit me. What happened was two divisions were going like that and they got apart and this thing in the middle was still uh, Germans going on as usual. And we just walked into it. That was scary. That was scary. I received the Bronze Star for the Jeep incident where it was basically shot out from under me. Then we really had him on a run to the end of the war. We went through to the Rhine River, across the Rhine, and we doubled back some, you know. In Germany, and it was very memorable to actually open the gate and let people out of a concentration camp. They, they were pinned in and uh, God, they'd come out of there and they wanted to hug you or touch you or something. Uh, they thank you so much and, and they were, you know, afoot and happy. And of course, I was happy too. And freedom came to people of half a dozen nations. And with freedom, controversy and problems to be solved with their own free hands. Rome, June 5th, 1944. And at the end of the war, God, we built big bonfires and my God, the war is over. They've given up. We're in charge. We're We'll be going home. We were the fifth division out of Europe. So I, I ended up going back to Long Beach, California and having a ball and the war was ended. Japan gave up. We were to go to Japan. Now what do we do? Well, this is a box of my goodies that's been in the safe for a while. I'm kind of anxious to see it myself. This is a flag that I took off the railroad station in Koblenz, Germany. This is a pistol. That is a P-38. I think it has the owner's name. I have not shot these much at all and don't want to. Now these are, it's 
some good stickers. This is a swastika emblem. Just picked them up off of corpses, you know. Some people would call that looting, I guess. I just wanted souvenirs. I got this off of the railroad station in Copeland, Germany. 1939 is when it was built, I guess. You're smelling that same old coal smoke. I think that'll hold it. I was driving my Jeep and we were coming through this train station and this flag was way up there on the top of this railroad station. It wasn't that I loved it. I kind of hated it, but uh, I see it and, I, and it brings back a lot of memories of World War II. World War II ended about 80 years ago, but I, I still think about it about every day. And it's part of my life I'll never forget. I just turned 98 years old. I had a, a birthday bash, actually, at the Banner Brothers meeting. First thing on our agenda today is we have a birthday. Paul Lesher is 98 years old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. They sang happy birthday and yahooed. Yeah. It would be fun to get to 100 years old. I think I'll let Jesus be the, the coach on that. He'll take me when he's ready, and, and I'm, I consider myself ready to go. I just don't want to go now. <laughs> 